Once upon a time, there was a young Vietnamese girl. She was living her life to the fullest, eating whatever she wanted, and not giving a damn about body image. Until one day, a friend of her family's told her that she's too fat, and that nobody's going to marry her because she's too fat. <laughs> yeah, and that comment just messed her up. She started comparing herself to other people and it hit her real hard that she was bigger than all her other friends. She started absolutely despising everything that she saw in the mirror and decided to dedicate her mind and energy to weight loss and becoming beautiful. She didn't know it then yet, but she has found her new best friend, Eddie. She started eating less and less and eventually started seeing progress and could grab less and less fat on her tummy and thighs. Also, the number on the scale started miraculously dropping and the clothes she was wearing started feeling larger and larger. Things were finally working out and she started being so so proud of herself. Oh girl, how confident she felt. But she was an ambitious gal. She wanted to push the number on the scale even more and starved herself even more and more, throwing away all the lunches that her parents carefully prepared for her every morning so she wouldn't maybe, I don't know, get hungry. And one day, when she was in class at school, she went unconscious. The school called an ambulance and they drove her to the hospital. There, they told her that she needed to eat more. She hated that so much that she had to listen. With frustration, she saw the number on the scale growing again. She started hating the person looking back at her in the mirror again. She kept gaining and gaining until she got sick of her body once again. But then she realized that there was actually another way. There was a such smarter way how to enjoy food and still lose weight. Oh, she thought she was a genius. All she needed was to eat all the food she wanted. Anything. And then only a finger in a toilet would just free her from her guilt. <laughs> I mean, it's no big deal, right? She was outsmarting the calories in minus calories out equation for weight loss. Her smartness was working. The number on the scale started being less scary and she felt happy with herself again. But then she'd gain weight again and her weight just kept fluctuating like crazy and she couldn't understand why and she only saw the solution for it in Eddie. Little did she know that Eddie was the actual reason behind it. There was a little sweet voice in her head telling her, you are doing amazing sweetie and you should be so so proud of your progress but still not enough. You can do even better. You could look like all the models you see on social media. Then the perfect timing for the beauty contest came, and the motivation for it fueled Eddie. She wanted to lose weight as fast as possible, and she found her solution in restricting again, obsessively counting and weighing every single calorie and eating no more than 800 calories a day. After the contest, she continued restricting because she absolutely loved the confidence she found in herself, but eventually. She started feeling so weak, so cold. She started shivering, and she was stuck in a constant brain fart. She was even more depressed than before, and she hated herself even more. She didn't see the point in living any longer. All she could think about was food, what she ate, what she's going to eat, and when she's going to eat. Recalculating all the calories and making sure she was under the limit. The need of control of weight that she started this journey with shifted into the need of control of control. She loved the control she had over her decision about food, and it was the only place of safety she found in the world that was slipping through her fingers. But she loved food too much, and the hunger and cravings of the deliciousness of ice cream, more ice cream, and especially ice cream grew stronger and stronger. Until one day, she gave in and returned back to binging and purging again. She felt so ashamed and guilty, hiding and isolating herself from everybody, including her family, 
and that made her even more miserable. The only comfort she could find in was in food, and a lot of it. At the beginning of this whole journey, she was convinced that she had control over Eddie. But then Eddie started taking over her whole mind. But this voice was manipulating her into believing that this behavior was absolutely okay. Even right, that it's going to make her feel better. She lost the control a very long time ago and she didn't even know. But not long ago, the realization finally hit me. This behavior was not okay. I can't keep on living like this when I'm actually not living my life. <laughs> I mean, I spent more time in the kitchen and the toilet than with my friends and family. What the heck? This is just sick. Do I seriously have to hate myself that much? I tried recovering myself because I thought, yeah, I'm the one making myself do it. I just need to stop. Girl, how wrong was I? I. The urge to binge, calorie count, to restrict. It kept coming back and beating me up. This was when I realized that Eddie took control over me. Eddie wasn't my best friend anymore. Eddie has never been my best friend. Eddie is my worst enemy. <laughs> Oh, how much I started hating myself when I realized that it was solely me who was killing myself. I was the one who caused it. But then I realized, wait, this is exactly what Eddie wants. It knows that I find comfort and safety in it. It knew that if I kept beating myself up in the vicious cycle of self-pity and self-hatred, I will eventually find my way back to it. It's so smart. But right now, my mindset is to finally, finally fight this voice. But I'm just a human. Of course, I will have slip ups from time to time. But that's absolutely okay. As long as I'm determined to recover. I mean, come on. It's been living in my head for years. And now I want to spread awareness about this mental illness. People, we've got to reach out for help. I let people know that eating disorders are a disgusting thing that's destroying people's lives. And I can imagine it's absolutely, absolutely difficult for the person that's never been through it to understand. And it's so, so difficult for the victims to try to explain what's going on in their head. We feel embarrassed or we are just scared to lose the thing that's giving us comfort. I mean, in this society, it's a compliment to tell somebody that they lost weight. And of course it makes somebody feel so good about themselves. But then I hate myself so much for doing this to myself. There is so many illogical fears that are going and storming in my mind. But you should know one thing. And that is that we need help. And there's just so many people that are scared or in denial to admit that they have an eating disorder. And the danger with this particular mental illness is that you can never know who has it. It's a mental illness. It's about the way how one is concerned about food and calories and, um, <laughs> In their body. And these concerns just consume my entire mind. All of my time. All my brain capacity. Just everything. Ah, I hate it. Being skinny does not determine an eating disorder. I was a normal weight this whole entire journey. And I was just ridiculously good at hiding my food and my eating disorder behaviors. Nobody noticed anything. But thank God, there were people that made me slap myself out of it and made me realize that I was sick and that I needed to recover. And I hope that I'm one of these people for you. Start your recovery. You can do it. You can beat Eddie. And you deserve to live your life in the best and happiest way possible, okay? And I have so much more to say about mental health and life in general. Not meaning to brag, 
but I've been through a lot of things. Been through a lot of ups and downs and stupid mistakes. But luckily for you, I make all the mistakes for you already. So you just need to watch and learn and not repeat any of those mistakes. So subscribe because this is gonna be an emotional roller coaster. Have a nice day and do not waste your life away. Boy.